Okay, so in this video, we will consider two very simple but fundamental ideas in counting. So here's the first idea, or at least let me give you the setup. What we'll consider is, suppose that you have a set of elements, and from this set of elements you will choose a few at random. Now there are two fundamental ways in which you can uh, perform the selection. So the first one, we are saying ordered selection versus an unordered selection. So let's see what that means quite simply. Let's start with an ordered selection. So quite simply, suppose you have a uh, an urn or a box where you have, say, six ball numbered from one to six. So one, two, three, four, five, six. So you have these six balls and the box. Suppose you close your eyes and you select three balls at random. And suppose that we are, in this case, considering an ordered selection. So suppose you select these three balls at random. Suppose you draw one first, then four, then two. And I suppose that you put them back in, you have the six balls again, and you draw one more time three balls at random. And I suppose that now you draw four, then two, then one. When you have an ordered selection, you keep track of which element was selected first, then second, then third. So under an ordered setup, these two events are considered to be different. Sure, we have in the end the same three balls, one, two, four, one, two, four. But in the first case, one was selected first, and in the second case, four was selected first. And so that's basically it. You could have a, you know, put those three balls back in, select three balls at random one more time, and you may get now one, two, and four. Once again, you have in the end the same three balls in your hand, one, two, and four. But as they were selected in a different order, they are also considered as a different selection. So that's it. So when you have an ordered selection, not only do you keep track of the elements you have in the end, but you also keep track of which came first, which came second, and so forth. Now obviously, you can figure out what is an unordered selection. Suppose we have the same setup. We have a box or an urn containing six balls numbered, say, from one to six. Again, we're going to select at random three balls. Suppose now that we select ball one first, then ball four second, then ball two third. Suppose we put them back in. We again select three balls at random. But now we draw first four, then we draw two second, and we draw one third. Now because it is unordered here, we do not care of the order of the selection, so we do not care about which ball came first, then second, then third. All we care about is, in the end, what balls are in your hand. Well, here you have balls 1, 2, 4. Here you have balls 1, 2, 4. So under an unordered setup, these are considered to be the same selection. Same thing if you draw first 1, then you draw 2, then you draw 4 you're left in the end with the balls 1, 2, 4 in your hands. As we do not keep track of which one came first, second, and third, this selection is also considered to be the same as the other two. And that's it. It's that simple. When you have an ordered selection, when you select your elements from the set of total possible elements, you keep track of which came first, second, and third. So the order matters. When it is unordered, you disregard the order in which the elements were selected, and you only look at the end, what elements do I have in my hands? And if they're the same as sets, they're the same 
as selections. And that is ordered versus unordered. The other idea now is the idea of with replacement or without replacement. And again, the name gives it away. Let's start with with replacement. Again, we suppose that we have an urn or a box that contains, say, six balls, numbered from one to six. And suppose again that we select three balls at random. Now, when it is with replacement, once you pick an element. So suppose that we select one first. So imagine that you have this box, you draw a ball at random, it comes out to be the first one. For your second selection you put the ball back in and you can select it again. Suppose that we draw now two, so we draw the ball two out of our box, we put it back in for our third selection so we can draw two again. So this is allowed. So again, the name gives it away. You have a set of numbers, a set of elements. You draw some at random, but every time you draw one out, before you draw for your next selection, you put that element back in. So you could draw one here three times, you could draw three, five, three. All of these are allowed. What if it was now without replacement? Well, this is once again pretty obvious, given that we have just covered with replacement. So we're seeing here, once you draw something out of your box, out of your set of elements, you cannot put it back in for the next selection. So here you could draw one. Once you draw one, it's out of the box. You can't draw it again. Then you could draw two. But once you draw two now, it's out of the box, you can't draw it again. And you could draw five, but once you draw five, it's out of the box, you can't draw it again. So this selection is allowed under without replacement. If you look at, say, one, five, five, this one is not allowed. Because, well, you draw one, so you take one out of the box. Then you draw 5, it's out of the box. So in your third selection, 1 and 5 are no longer available. So you can't draw 5 again. This is impossible under without replacement. Well, you could draw 3, 6, 4. That is allowed. You could draw 4, 5, and 4. That is not allowed. As if you drew 4 as your first ball, once you draw it, it's out. So you can't draw it again in your third selection, also not allowed under without replacement. And that's it. So it's that simple. If you have a counting setup that is with replacement, imagine that you have this box with the elements. You draw the first element, and before you draw the second element, you can you put your element back in the box, and then you draw your second. Whatever it is, once it's drawn, before you choose your third element, you put it back in the box and then you choose again. So every single choice, you always have the same number of possible elements. Without replacement is the opposite. If you draw something out, say one, then you can no longer draw one in the second pick. If you draw a 2 in your second pick, then it's out of the box, you don't put it back. So now 1 and 2 are no longer available for your third pick. And if you draw 5 as your third pick, 5 is no longer available for the fourth pick if there was a fourth pick. 
So in the case of without replacement, if you draw 1, 2, 5, the only possible numbers for your fourth selection would be 3, 6, or 4. And that's it. That is with replacement or without replacement.